So imagine if your dreams would really come true. I need to make a confession. My name is Tuomo, and I'm a dreamaholic. And when I was a kid, my dad used to ask me questions in the beginning of each summer, and they went something like this. Son, have you ever had ice cream in Venice? And I was like, nope. Well, would you like to? Yeah. So should we go? Yeah. And we did. We took our old rusty car, drove 3,000 kilometers south, and had ice cream in Venice, Italy. The next summer, he would ask me, Son, have you ever been swimming in the Arctic Ocean? And I was like, no. Well, would you like to? Yeah. So should we go? And we did. We took the same old car, drove 1,500 kilometers up north, and had a swim in the Arctic Ocean. And my dad was making his dreams reality, and he's still dreaming and, and doing that. And I kind of got an idea from that, that you can do anything. If you just decide and start doing something about it. But too often, we are afraid to say our dreams out loud because we focus so much on the things that can go wrong. And but what if we didn't? What if we thought, what if I don't fail? What would happen? Or bravely even, what if I succeed? And if we would do that, I think it would totally change the way we look at life in general. 20 years ago, I was sitting in a small tavern on a Greek island, and I had just started my new professional career as a travel guide. And I was sitting there with my new boss, explaining her how the company should be ran. And not just our destination, but the entire company. And it was my first day, and it was a pretty big company. And then, you know, she would listen for a while, and then she said, maybe you should be the CEO of this company. Yeah, shouldn't I? I said, and, you know, we laughed. But then time went by, and 15 years after that, that discussion, the day came, and I was appointed as a CEO of that $300 million travel company. And while I was working as a CEO, I was secretly admiring those young men and women in startup companies, passionately wanting to change the world and do something meaningful. And I, I wanted to be one of them. I had no clue how to get there, nor I had got to become an entrepreneur myself at that point. But then, a year and a half ago, I had stopped working in the travel company, and I decided maybe I should do something about my dream. And now, I'm involved with seven startup companies who dream about revolutionizing the businesses they are in. Will they make it big? I don't know, they might, or they might end up going bust, who knows. But I don't think about that too much. I could, you know, all the time, but I don't. I'd rather think about the possibility of us succeeding and making big. And that is exciting. As a teenager, I used to make lists of the things I want to do in my life. And on top of my list, read that I want to sail around the world alone. And I failed. Haven't done that. And I don't think I ever will do that. Um, but a while ago, 
I went to pick up my son from the daycare. And I asked my son, have you ever sailed around the world? Uh, no. Well, would you like to? Yeah? So should we go? Yeah. So, I'm not going to sail around the world alone, but I'm going to do that with my wife, Rika, and our three kids, who are now seven, five, and three years old. And it's going to take us six years to do that. And we will cut off the bowlines next June, six months from now. We will travel to 75 countries in 75 months and be back in Finland in 2022. And we will start our journey in the Mediterranean, where our boat is now. Um, and we will first sail to West Africa, then uh, across Atlantic Ocean to um, South America, then across Pacific Ocean to Australia and New Zealand. And from there, on the way home, we will go through West uh, or Southeast Asia and then across Indian Ocean to Madagascar and Africa and then back to Americas. And from there, the last sprint will be along the U.S. East Coast and Canada before heading to Scandinavia and Finland in some time in 2022. There's the crew, and we will be going most of the trip with this kind of crew, and of course there will be some extra crew joining us in the long passages um, across the oceans. So it will be 40,000 nautical miles, and six years will give us time to be, uh, spend longer times in, in multiple places. We know that living with kids in a small boat is not always going to be a paradise. In fact, it can be nerve-wracking. It can be catastrophically difficult sometimes. But living in a boat, it's like living the extreme in both ends. The great things are way, way better than anything on land. But it's true that some challenges can build up to be quite something else when you're in the middle of the ocean. And sailing with kids, it is different. When I'm sailing with the adult crew, they usually do what I tell them to. If I tell them, do not jump off the boat, they won't. But kids might. Or adults do not usually put open milk bottles upside down in the fridge. Or they don't piss around the boat's toilet. Well, some adults do, but kids do that for sure. And then they ask, why not? So whenever it's really difficult, I tell my wife that think about next year. Kids will be a little bit older, and it's going to be so much easier. And you know, she looks at me and smiles. And you might be thinking about risks related to an adventure like this. And, and we think about them too. Um, we've gone through tens of different scenarios with doctors and co insurance company risks analysts to be able to be prepared. And it's been a tough process to think about all these nasty things that you know, will most likely never happen, but they could. So it's better to be prepared um, and think about them now. And some people ask us, you know, what if you don't make it? And then I say, well, if we only make it to New Zealand, then, then we only make it to New Zealand, which is pretty far, right? And if we were primarily thinking about not making it, I don't think we would have even started planning something like this in the first place. An adventure like this, it is a human experiment to some extent. 
And the most interesting thing to see is how do we get along as family? Because there will be definitely times that we all feel that it's, it's too much and not fun at all. But we very strongly believe that the highs will defeat the lows big time. In a boat, we've got to be self-sufficient. We've got to be able to provide the electricity, the drinking water by ourselves, and we need to be able to fix most things by ourselves. We can't call anyone in the middle of the ocean, or we can call them via satellite, but they can't help, help much. So whatever comes, we need to be able to manage and uh, get by as a family. We want our kids to see the world. We want them to understand how beautiful it is and what can we do to preserve the beauty. So we will be volunteering in multiple uh, ocean conservation and uh, social awareness projects during our trip. And then there's the education. How do we handle that? It was clear from the beginning when we started planning this that we don't just want to go sailing, but we want to do something meaningful and worthwhile on the way. And since we do have the kids and we do need to take care of their education, we thought maybe we could build something around that that could not only benefit us, but others as well. And a year ago, we started contacting companies who work in education and in technology with an idea in mind that we could build a future digital school on our boat. And how could we do that? You know, we're no teachers. We studied business, for God's sake. And I'm highly dyslexic and certainly had my troubles in school back in the day. So we understood that you know, we can't do that alone, but we need best possible partners to work with us on this initiative that we call Sail for Good Education. And now we've gathered together an ecosystem type project with over 20 companies and growing. And with a network like that, we believe that we can guarantee the great education for our kids even in the middle of the ocean, hundreds of miles away from the nearest classroom. But not only that, together with them, we've created a new kind of digital education model and a concept that we believe can truly make a difference in the lives of the kids in the countries where we're going by helping them to get the education that they would not otherwise be entitled to. So our dream is to act as a real-life laboratory for new kind of edu digital education tools and methods and content and platforms. And by that, we can demonstrate what the future digital school would look like. No classroom, no in-person teachers, and learning strongly related to the real life instead of theory. And if we can make that work in a boat, it should be working anywhere, right? So it's a huge dream, but is it doable? Well, I, I believe it is. So we can all decide, do we want to keep on dreaming about doing things, or then we can decide to start doing something about them. Because the bottom line always is that if we don't do anything, nothing will happen. So let's make sure that we all do. Thank you. <laughs>